Well, hey folks, how y'all doing? Welcome back. And oh man, Tom, Tom, what are you doing today? You know what? Um, I had these in the freezer and uh, I, I had them, you know, wrapped up real nice. Uh, I had them in my vacuum seal bags and I forgot they were there. And you know what? I, they've been in there for a couple of months. I had no idea what they were. So hey, there's, a, there's a lesson right there. If you're going to vacuum seal stuff and you don't know what it is. Because first I took it out and thought, you know, I was going to try a chuck roast and uh and see if i couldn't do low, low and slow and then after i thawed it overnight i took it off this morning and opened up the bag and there's two pieces of meat they kind of look like a steak like and I, I i vaguely remember several months ago buying these from sam's club i think it was a four pack i think they're chuck steak to be honest with you now when i did them and i think i made a video they, they didn't turn out very well uh so i'm, I'm gonna try a couple things here to, to try and tenderize these, um, you know, one of the things we could use is uh, we could use our chef master here, and uh, you, you can see that's got all the blades in there, and 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 I may still do that to try and tenderize this. I, I've watched a lot of other people use kosher salt, and um, what they do is they sprinkle kosher salt, and you say, "Ooh, that's heavy," but you're not going to keep it on there. You're going to wash this off eventually, so. Sprinkle some kosher salt on there. What the kosher salt is supposed to do, and uh, you know, I'm not a chef, so I don't know all the particulars about this, but apparently it draws some of the moisture and it also gets in and starts breaking down some of the protein, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure someone will correct me and tell me that this is this doesn't do anything or tell me that it does. Now, as far as time, how long to let it sit like this, I'm going to put it back in the fridge and uh, I think think what I rule of thumb here is about an hour per inch and these are about an inch inch and a half so about an hour and a half I'm gonna let these sit in the fridge and take them out and then I'm gonna wash all the salt off it but just put some regular seasoning on it I'll probably stick away from anything real salt heavy uh, maybe I'll use use this to get her a little bit more tender and then this is not something I think I would do low and slow. I think this is something I'll do hot and fast. So uh, keep on watching and you'll see if we can't make these supposed <laughs> chuck steaks nice and tender. Keep on watching. Right, folks, about an hour and a half uh, with the salt on there. Took us, washed everything off, dried it off real nice. I'm going to take my, uh, my chef master here and uh, as I showed before, you can see it's got all these pins in there and this should help with the tenderizing. And um, just yeah, remember when you're doing this though, that it does thin out your meat a little bit. So we're just going to do it in different directions. I'm going to flip it over. Uh, I'm going to put a little olive oil on this and a little bit of just a light seasoning, some of the big Dick's Big Kahuna on here. And uh, we're going to be cooking this on the uh, Rectech. I'm going to fire the Rectech up and get it up to uh, 400 and a serum on, on the Rectech. I haven't had the Rectech up to high temps for a while now and I've done a bunch of low and slow on there. So good thing if you if you own a pellet grill is to do that every so often. Um, like I said, if, when I do a low and slow, especially when it's greasy, I've done some beef ribs the last couple of times, fair amount of grease in there. Uh, I do clean out the grill real, real well, scraped uh, some of the excess grease out of there. And now by doing this 400 cook, this will help get some of the other grease out of there. So good maintenance tip for your uh, pellet grill if you have one. If not, uh, what are you waiting for? So we'll see you at the grill. Folks, there we are. We've got the Rectex set at 400, and it's, uh, it's, it's at 400, but it's still dialing itself in. You know, you can see the amount of smoke that's coming out of there. And uh, like I said, you even got grease coming out of the grease trap. So it, it is important to do this. Occasionally, if you have a pellet grill, it should be part of your maintenance routine just to do a burn off every so often. And uh, you can see I've got my grill grates on there. That's what the uh, that's what everything's going to go on there. And uh, like I said, if you're going to do this, uh, where well, you're going to burn off some of the grease, uh, stay with your grill. Don't walk away because you never know when you might get a little bit of a grease fire. So I'm going to maintain this. I'm going to let this go for maybe 10, 15 more minutes before I put the. Uh, steaks on uh, we do have a little rain moving in so i kind of like to get this done before the rain comes in although uh we are pretty pretty rain proof on the rec tech mini with uh the modifications with the chimney and the back holes being covered up and uh we'll give you a look see you as we proceed right, folks that's about 15 minutes you can see the smoke is cleared a lot of that grease is burned off all that excess grease which is a good thing i've got my steaks there let's uh let's get them on shall we 
real greats there. Nice sizzle. So we're gonna go maybe a minute and a half, quarter turn, another minute and a half, then flip them, and then uh, we'll give you a look-see when we're getting close. I don't wanna get these overdone. I want these to be more rare than medium. With all the ranges started, uh, I've, I've, I have flipped them. I, I want to show it to you folks. Hey, hang on, let's do a real quick, real quick look, shall we? Oh yeah, looking mighty good. Get out of the rain. There's our chuck steak. Uh, obviously did them in the rain a little bit. Um, about, I think it was about two minutes and then quarter turn, two minutes, and then flipped them. Let's, let's take a look here. See how they turned out. See, uh, well, definitely medium rare. Let's uh, take another piece off here. Take a look, see here. Take just a little bite here. You know what? Not too bad. Is it as good as a ribeye? Probably not. But, you know what? Get them on sale. A little extra prep work. They turn out okay. So, there they are, folks. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Tom Horseman at YouTube. Uh, thumbs up. And as always, folks, uh, I, I can't say it enough. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it.